How many of you can relate? The other one was we were coming home from Santa Cruz yesterday, and I had my real glasses here and my uh, sunglasses here, and I'm like going, where are my glasses? Where? It took me about 10 minutes to realize that they were here. You know how that is. So anyways, good morning. It's Monday, November 14th, and the cat has just let herself back in. She, I don't know how she knows to... When I'm going to be going live, we'll just see how well she behaves. So far, okay. So I hope you had a lovely weekend. As I mentioned, we actually went to Aptos for a baby shower, and it was so much fun. We were with Warren and Wendy. Wendy has been on the show before, and it was just, we spent the night. It was just absolutely wonderful, glorious, so much fun. It was hosted at a house that backed onto like a green belt, and kids were, they had a big blow-up house out there, kids were playing. It was just absolutely lovely. Um, hi from, hi to Green Bay, you know you have my heart, right? So today, you are going to want to stay on, okay? Amy Pabst, I have an interview with her. And her, oh my gosh, get off the thread. She's eating the thread on my sewing machine. Actually, I just looked up and she is in the adolescent stage. And that's apparently about as naughty as it gets. <laughs> so, stop it. Anyways, um, I got some, some, good, some good things from you, as I always do. And so this is from Kay. And this is... From, she didn't have room for a big quilt. Okay, I get it. And this is our current BOM. And so she did it all out of scraps, but she did the Barbara Black technique of doing a wool for the stem. She didn't want to deal with the skinny, skinny little stems. And so that's just a reminder that you can put things together, different fiber contents. Don't, don't, be, don't be afraid to do that. All right, and then this is Jane bought a kit from us, Jennifer Sampoo's. It was a pillow kit. And, and as soon as she told me that, because I wrote back, I said, is that Jennifer's ombres? And she said, yeah, and she got the kit from our store, and the kit was for a pillow, but she decided to make a table runner. But I want to show you this, too. Um, she did a close-up. She used a bunch of Cindy Needham's stencils for the quilting, especially in that neutrals area. And I'll tell you people, if you haven't watched the Cindy Needham show, she's been on I think three times, she is just a master, a master at quilting. And in fact, since I've started studying under her, um, okay, I've been doing this over 40 years, I did not know how to use templates. Mm -mm. for a quilting design. I didn't know how to do it. I was from the school of learning to draw it by yourself. So I'm ready to go back up to Chico again and, and start on another um, quilt and just learn more and more and more. And I've said this several times, but I think that is one of the beauties of being um, a quilter today. You, you can't, you're never here with learning. You're never here. It's always go up, go up, go up. Well, like for instance, our BOM this next year, 22, with Sarah, when she was on and she did that thing with aluminum foil, I, I, I hadn't seen it. It was how to make circles. Okay, status of the BOM 2023. Bad news, we're almost out of kits. Um, I think we might have a couple dozen left. That's it. But that's not it. We were wise enough to pull bolts um, for another hundred, all right? And the reason we didn't cut them all at once was because this kit's gonna be a little different than other kits you've received in as much as there are not formal jelly rolls, but there's a lot of strips in there the size of jelly rolls. The cut, it was designed to be cut so that we could give you more fabrics than not. I, I'm making up a number and if Barbara's on, she could probably tell us, but there's about 70 or 80 different fabrics in this kit. So uh, I got hold of Kristen right before we went live, and I said, how long is it going to take once we say pull the trigger? It'll take about 30 days to get them to us, which means mid-December. So if you are interested, if you, if you want it, 
right now, go get it, okay? Um, if you want it but missed the boat, go to the store and go to the wish list. That's what you're going to do, all right? And um, where is all this going on? My daughter's texting me. Um, so so that's what you're you're going to want to do, all right? Now, in today's newsletter, there is a uh, image, I thought I had loaded up here, shame on me, I didn't, um, of a quilt that went missing. Turn this thing off. And it was um, made by, um, where are we, where are we? Oh, Sa Sashiko Ch Chiba, I think is the name. Um, I will, you know what I'll do is while we're listening to the video, I'll go pull it up and get it in here if I can to show you. Um, it is. It was first prize in traditional in the 2022 Festival of Quilts in Birmingham. And then it was all packed with the winning quilts to go to um, another show in London, the Knitting and Stitching Show in London. Uh, when it came out to hang the quilts, it was missing. So I will get, while we're watching Amy, I'll see what I can do to pull in there and grab that image and show you because that is just wrong on 10,000 levels. All right, now let me see what that's, I believe, Jane Jane. All right, I never get political, ever, ever, but there was a measure in Livermore that was uh, funding for the schools and it was actually for the school grounds and it, um, it lost, all right? In the meantime, while it is pouring rain, um, the high school turned into Lake Granada and um, one kid, I, they probably pulled a bunch of kids together, but he was bet $200 that he would not do this. I think this is hilarious. Now, John and I were saying, would I be proud of my kid or would I be mad? I think I might be proud. So, yes, our schools did need help. No, it did not pass. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. All right. So let's get on to Amy Pabst, and I'm going to go try and find that quilt and get it to you, okay? Sit down for this one. You're just not going to believe it. Oh, before we go there, I want to say one other thing. There are circle templates that were in an add-on kit and they were printed wrong and so when you order your BOM if you want a template if you want the template kit or the, the add-on kit everything will be mailed to you with your BOM fabric with the exception of those template patterns and as soon as we get them we'll ship it out to you at no charge so that's just a little side note it was a you know it's just hold it was done wrong and then supply and blah, blah. I mean we're all tired of that so okie dokie dokie where do I find the bat Barbara Black past blogs for garden down under it would be in the um the learn section and there'll be a place just for Barbara okay and if I'm wrong John will come in and tell me but let's get on with Amy people you're just not gonna yeah 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 unbelievable here we go Hello, Miss Amy Paps. How are you? Hello, I'm doing all right today. Listen, I am really happy that you're joining us, and I know people are just going to be amazed and shocked and astounded by what you do. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little unusual. Now, right now, um, you're at your home, and we just discovered before we started recording, or I discovered Amy's gone back to school to finish up her degree in fiber arts. Yes. <laughs> Makes me so yes. happy. Um, and tell them the university you're at. Okay, so I'm at Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia. But, okay, okay, so now you're doing this, you're being exposed to different things, but you have really carved a niche for yourself in the quilting world, would you not say? Yeah, I mean, there's a few other people out there who are doing similar things that I do, but not not very many people do it, definitely. And yes, I definitely have like a specialty going on for sure. Okay, well, let's take a look at just at, at one of the quilts. 
Um, and you can tell us about this quilt. <laughs> okay, so um, all of the quilts in this interview are from my series Micro Piecing, which you, that kind of explains the title once you start to look at these. So I love a challenge, obviously. And as I was going along, um, I thought exactly how small can I make these blocks? And the blocks in this quilt, um, they finish at one half inch and they have 34 pieces in each block. And I don't think it was physically possible to get any smaller than this. This was really difficult. So um, this quilt measures 10 inches by 10 inches and has 10,000 pieces in it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do a close up so everybody can take their breath. Yeah, I... it's very small pieces. Okay. So are these foundation paper pieces or what? Yes, so I use George Siciliano's um, foundation paper. It's called Foundation Stuff, and I have ordered so much of that, and that's pretty much what I use exclusively for foundation piecing, yes. It, explain it to us, the properties of it, if you don't mind. Okay, so it's kind of like an interfacing, um, like a thin interfacing, or like a thick dryer sheet. Okay. And run it through your printer, and um, then you stitch directly on it and it distorts maybe just the teeniest tiniest bit which you can't tell unless you're making half inch blocks so it's pretty stable and um, then you just leave it in your quilt you do not have to pick it out which is kind of, it makes it kind of a miracle product yeah and here's the thing right now well this is going to air probably next week but right now you do have a special exist exhibit at Houston. So maybe a lot of the people that have seen this will really have a deeper understanding. And and you're not at Houston because you have to go to school. Right, right. <laughs> okay, tell us about this one, please. Okay, and so this is another quilt. So um, a lot of my inspiration comes from modern or contemporary quilters, and then a few of mine are original designs, and then I get a lot of inspiration from quilts that were made like from 1850 to mm -hmm. 1900, which was kind of like the heyday for the log cabin and the pineapple block. So this quilt is inspired by a quilt that was in the collection of Pilgrim and Roy for many years. And the original quilt that I made or that I was looking at, um, so I had a detailed photograph and I would zoom in it and I could see that there were plaid fabrics in there. So to reduce the scale of these blocks so small, I could not find a plaid fabric that was that small of a scale. So what I actually did was I used um, like Christmas ribbon. You can see the plaids there out towards the outside corners of the box. So that yes. is just like an old Christmas ribbon. Yes. And that was the only way I could find a plaid that was that small. And I'm out I is it like, like, like good ribbon or cheap ribbon? Like polyester ribbon. Oh yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ah, how big are these blocks about? Do you even remember? Yes. Yeah, so these blocks finish at, I think, an inch and a half. And so <laughs> those little strips in there. Um, so oh my, my, personal, <laughs> my personal definition for micro piecing is any block that is smaller than two inch. And then the individual strips are all smaller than one eighth of an inch. So this particular one, the blocks are, <laughs> or the strips are like maybe a millimeter wide. They were pretty small. So, so they were cut at an eighth of an inch? No. No. So um, they finished at an eighth of an inch. Right. An eighth of an inch or less. <laughs> People, look at your ruler. <laughs> I'm looking at my rotary yeah. mat. <laughs> it's small. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because I just can't believe this. Look yes. at this, everybody. I used to oh, tell us okay. about this. So this quilt is actually probably one of the more ambitious things that I've done. So this quilt measures um, 31 inches by about 34 inches. So it's pretty big compared oh, to some huge. of the Oh, that's huge. Right. So, and then um, it has 31,000 pieces in it. And um, one of the things about paper piecing is that you waste, or foundation piecing, is that you waste a lot of fabric, like you trim a lot of it off and throw it away. So even though this quilt isn't that big, um, there were seven yards of white silk fabric that went into this quilt. And it was 54 inch um, wide fabric, so it really ate up the fabric on that. And then all of the collared fabrics in here are um, upcycled silk sari fabrics that I bought on Etsy. So, um, was it like a grab bag of them or something like that? I got, 
I think 200 squares and they were each a different color. I think they were just a couple duplicates. Okay, yeah. did I, I, my bet is you didn't have to face it with anything because you're doing it on George's foundation, right? Right. That's what's so neat about that paper is that you can use any sort of fabric that you want. You can use like these uh, silks were pretty thin and flimsy. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use uh, stretchy fabrics or anything like that. And that foundation just acts as a stabilizer. And so you can use any type of fabric that you want, really. That is amazing. What gave you the idea to go to Etsy and get a bunch of um, sari fabric? Oh, I get loads of fabric um, from Etsy, um, especially like maybe in the past three or four years, I've been like, I mean, I use a lot of quilting cottons, but I've been like experimenting with loads of different fabrics and there'll be some more specialty fabrics that will come up in some of these upcoming pieces. But yeah, Etsy is an awesome resource to get anything weird. You can buy pretty much like any shade of like hand dyed velvet or just and just unusual things that you don't really even find at the big quilt shows. Well, come to think of it, I got a bunch of um, Indian trim, just hunks of trim that I was using for when I was doing like cloth books. And it was just like Chris and it's cheap. I mean, really, it's it's yeah. cheap and it's like Christmas when you get it. I mean, it's oh, I know. Ah, well, yeah. OK, here we now. OK, let me ask you this. Then why did you go so big on this one? I mean, it's monstrous. <laughs> right. So um, a lot of my when I'm planning out my quilts and by the way, this quilt is called Sorry, Not Sorry. And it's <laughs> But um, a lot of my quilts, um, I'm really big into competition. So when I'm planning out my quilts, I pick a category that I want to enter. And then I make a quilt that fits in that category. So uh, my miniatures, most of the others are fit in the miniatures category. But I wanted to be like, just like in the small wall quilts or, um, or um, yeah, like smaller piece quilts. Did you, did you clean up in Paducah one year in the miniatures? No, I have actually never gotten like the grand prizes at Paducah. Really? I wonder if it was George then, because when we were talking before, you know, or do a lot of people do this and all that? Not really, but he did come to mind, but I couldn't pull his name up. I feel I like know. he, I know he has one that went into the permanent collection there at the museum because he got the, um, the purchase award. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, did we look at Bloom yet? No. Okay. I love so, it. Yes. So this is one of my quilt pieces that was inspired by a contemporary quilt maker. So I came across um, this quilt during um, a virtual, it was a Gamble virtual show um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I saw the quilt and I was like seized by it. And I immediately knew that I had to make a quilt that was inspired by um, by the original and her the lady who, who made it is Terry O'Mara and so I emailed her and asked her if it was okay um, if I used her design and made my own piece and exhibited it in shows and she very graciously allowed me to do that so um, her original quilt had so many different shades of greens and pinks and like you would not believe how many different shades of fabric there were so I looked at a picture of her quilt and then um, I got out my Kona collar card and I ordered just like eighth inch or no, I'm sorry, eighth yard cuts of like 50 or 60 different colors <laughs> for this one little quilt. And, but this was, I enjoyed making this piece a lot. Okay. Is this a baby quilt too in the scheme of things? Um, I think it's 11 by 12 inches, pretty small. Wow. Yeah. Hey, how long have you been quilting anyways? So I started quilting in 2011, at the beginning of 2011, so about 12 years. Yeah. Were you in a beginning class or, I mean, what did you, how did you, how did you get in this direction? I guess that's okay. really a big question. So, yeah. Um, so um, my mom and my grandma taught me to sew when I was about 10 years old. Um, they worked at a dry cleaners and I did all the alterations like hemming prom dresses and oh, no. replacing zippers and all that. And I just hated it so much. So I stayed away from sewing for a really long time. And then um, in 2011, when I was in my early 20s, I just like randomly picked up this book. 
at, about quilting from the local library. And that was like a thunderbolt moment in my life. Like it just, I haven't slowed down since then. Like I just kind of fell into, a, I like to call it a creative fever because that's what it feels like. But yeah, I haven't slowed down since I, then. I feel like when I discovered quilting <clears throat> 40 years ago before you were <coughs> born, um, <laughs> uh, it was like, I found my home. This is my home. This is where yeah. I land and feel soft. You people know? Talk about, yeah, people talk about like finding their place in life. So like my place in life is behind a sewing machine for sure. Hey, well, while you're doing your schooling, you better do some sewing for some of your projects. Seriously. Okay. I brought two. Oh, for like my actual class projects. Yes. I, I think I'm going to be like become known as that quilt lady because yeah. <laughs> anytime a professor's like, here, draw a picture. I'm like, oh, I'll draw, I'll draw a sewing machine. And like, oh, write a paper. And I'm like, oh, okay. About my favorite quilter, you know? So yeah, <laughs> I, I don't stop talking about it. Basically. Now the quilts we've just been looking at are wild, wild with color, but not this one. Yeah. So this is another one that um and i haven't been giving the names of the coat uh the quilts but i call this one ghost mm -hmm. for and this is another one with uh specialty fabrics so the fabrics in this quilt are synthetic linings from um vintage kimono jackets so from like the 40s and 50s and you can buy these there's a lady i think she lives in new york but she's on etsy and she deconstructs these uh, silk kimono jackets and then she sells the different parts of them. So you can buy these synthetic linings by the pound. And I bought several pounds of them and just, wow. um, so yeah. You know, I'm looking really close here. Now, mm -hmm. I guess it is machine quilted in the ditch, right? Is that what's yes. going on? So, okay. So right. they're all foundation piece on a machine and then they're all um, machine quilted in the ditch. and. I go like I go between each block and then I it sort of ends up being like little Christmas tree shapes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I quilt back and forth and back and forth. And I'd but like you, I'd like you to share what you sew on. Oh yeah, okay. So I do my piecing on a 1947 Singer featherweight machine and so it's everybody loves the featherweight cuz it does one thing, a straight stitch <laughs> and um so the thread that I use actually is, I like uh, monofilament thread and a lot of machines are kind of- For the piecing? Uh, the piecing, yes. And the bobbin? So I, and the bobbin? I use it in the top and the bobbin, yes. So a lot of machines don't like to use that thread so much, but mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I got that featherweight. I calibrated the tension just for that thread and it's the only, th only thread that I use in the machine and it just handles it perfectly. That's interesting. Now, what about quilting? So for quilting, um, I have a pretty good Bernina that I use, and then um, I usually use, a, again, a monofilament thread in the top, and then I like to use like a silk thread in the bobbin for that. Do you use your walking foot? Yes, walking foot. It's all let, walking foot. Let me tell you a trick, like I can, like I can teach you anything. But when yeah. I'm on my Bernina, uh, my regular domestic Bernina, I put on the walking foot, and then, and then I butt. Um, Actually, it's a quilter select ruler, but it's for straight line quilting free form. And you do it on the back part of the walking foot and then it keeps it from sliding at all. I mean, it really keeps you straight. But then again, when it's that small, it's probably not even an issue. I'm, I'm usually going like two stitches and pivot and two stitches and yeah, pivot. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't want to say I have a favorite. Okay. Because I did like that other one a lot, but I really like this one. Uh oh, shoot. Close your eyes, people. Look at this. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. So this quilt I call Peaches and Cream, and I'm glad it went right after the last quilt with the synthetic um, linings. So if you saw the previous quilt, you saw that they were all slightly different colors, mm -hmm. and a lot of times they're slightly different fabric contents. So I put all of those fabrics into the same pot of orange dye, and they all came out different. And I tried to make this, um, it's all the same pineapple block, but I tried to do as many like variations of the pineapple block that I could to kind of make it look like a sampler. I'm going to have to really, I may have to print this out and really look at it because you're saying <laughs> that's all the same pineapple block. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. yeah. Well, let's take a close up, which I just blew doing before it. That's okay. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, and again, so these blocks, um, they finish at one inch, and then those little strips in there are maybe a little, about a millimeter and a half 
wide, so they're pretty pretty narrow. Okay, and then this is called something man, or I titled it dressed up, but what do you call it? Uh, sharp dressed man. Sharp dressed man. Okay, yes. it's ties, people. This is yes, ties. Oh, yeah. I love this. Okay, so <laughs> any any tricks on ties? Because we're going to be doing it in January. Um, okay, so again, it, uh, I was working with the foundation, so um, you can use any type of fabric. And um, the silk ties, I think you'll be surprised at how much fabric comes out. Like you really get a lot of usable fabric from just one um, necktie. And a lot of times, like I would try to follow the prints, and so my strips ended up being bias strips. Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe think about which way you're wanting your grain to run when you're cutting your pieces, because oh. they work very. I'm going to tell people in the class that they probably should face it with something, some sort of oh, prep or something. Um, I was surprised with the ties. I've only made one quilt, and it certainly wasn't anything like that. Um, they they're they're kind of hefty fabric. I mean, it's substantial fabric. Some of them are really thick. Some of them are really just kind of like a thin piece of silk, really. Yeah, but a lot of them are kind of on the thicker side. Wow, wow. Okay, so before we talk about what you're doing, besides being a student, did you buy a new lunchbox? Maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a cooler. I never go anywhere without like water and snacks. So, yeah. Sorry. My heart is so happy for you. I can't stand it. Okay, so Quilt Mania is one of the very nicest publications out there, in my humble opinion. How did you get hooked up with them? Okay, so I had um, a series of quilts that were kind of like this, but a little bigger, and they were log cabin quilts. And they were an exhibit, a special exhibit at Houston in 2019. Okay. And... While they were there, um, Carol Vaughn was there, and I did not meet her, but she took a lot of pictures of my quilt and my quilts, and then sent me an email a few weeks later wanting to do an interview for the magazine. Mm -hmm. And so that went really well, and the pictures were just fabulous. Yeah. And she, said, oh well, let's write a book. And I was like, well, I don't know, I don't know anything about publishing or writing or photography or anything. And she said it. Um, she told me you don't have to be a Mrs. Shakespeare to write a good book. So, um, yeah, it was, so it was, um, March, 2020, I packed up all my quilts and was going to ship them to France to be photographed and the economies all over the world started shutting down. So I yeah. emailed them, are you sure you want me to send this? So we waited a few weeks and when it looked like things were going to stabilize, I went ahead and shipped them over there. And then, um, the book, I, I had like the first copy of the book in my hands in November, 2020 and I couldn't believe how fast that's happened. super fast that's ridiculous fast and in, in my yeah. mind I thought it was gonna like stretch out over like 18 months or two well, years or something. I think for a lot of publishers that's the case Amy seriously you know so congratulations by the way that's a beautiful cover too Thank okay you. so before we got on let me get rid of this picture let's look at pretty Amy with her blue eyes that are real um <laughs> I said, okay, so what are you doing now? Well, we find out she's in college again. I can just, oh God. Um, but you do travel in the summer, correct, now? Yes, yes. And, and when you travel, what do you do? Um, so my favorite thing to do is to do trunk shows, um, mm -hmm. pack out. I, and it's kind of funny. I show up for a trunk show, and I've got maybe like two or three bags. <laughs> of quilts but there's like 40 or 45 quilts in the just two or three bags yeah so I, I love trunk shows and it's really um it's, it works out well to combine trunk shows with teaching um I teach a foundation piecing class of a three inch block not a half inch block but a mm -hmm. three inch block and it's really popular and um then I have a certification from the National Association of Certified Quilt Judges and I travel a lot to judge also and as it is right now, I'm occasionally able to do things on weekends, but mostly it's it's like get summertime. that degree, get that yeah. degree. Um, so if somebody wanted to get hold of you, I know people not if people are going to want to get hold of you. Um, how do they get hold of you? Okay, so the best way is email, and so my email address is amypabs19 at 
gmail.com. Okay, A M Y P A B S T. One nine at gmail.com. Okay, all right. I'm sure you'll be hearing from people. This is just so much fun. And thank you so much. And again, Amy, I am so happy for you. I don't want to say I'm proud of you because that's just the dumbest thing to say, but I am so happy that you're back in school. And it's going to be interesting to see how it changes you or how you view things. And, and the thing I found in art school was that there's some things I just hate and some things I wouldn't be a quilter if I hadn't gone. Yeah. I wouldn't be, it just, that's the way it went. And in a fiber program, I know of all things in West Virginia, I was, I was just so thrilled to find that out. <laughs> so thank you so very much and um, study hard, do your homework yes. <laughs> and hang on to that lunchbox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Amy. All right. Thank you, Alex. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, good night. Isn't she just wonderful? I mean, she was in Houston and Barbara's on right now and Barbara would remember better than myself, but in 18, I think 2018 around there, she had a, a solo exhibit and she did this year too. And you walk up and it just blows your mind when you see it. And I wasn't faking it when I was saying, I'm so glad you've gone back to art school. I mean, or just at first that she could find a fiber program, you know, and I, I just love every, everything about that lady and her eyes are just, they didn't come quite across here, but okay. I shouldn't be talking about looks. That's like really wrong. Okay. In the meantime, I found the quilt. The MI 2019 was her solo exhibit at Houston. Thank you, Barbara. I remember seeing that too. And it was just, <sighs> okay. Here's the quilt that's MIA that we were talking about. Isn't it beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Again, it's Sashiko Chib C H I B A Chib Chiba Chiba. Um, if you have a lead on this quilt, you can get hold of her via Facebook. Um, if you can't remember that, get hold of us. We'll get hold of her. We've never met in person, but I just think this is just horrible that this has happened. Absolutely horrible. And it was real funny. I got an email from somebody today saying. Well, could you please, you know, put it out there? And Mary Kay had already put it in our newsletter. And I thought, well, I'm just going to double down here too. All right. All right. One other thing about the BOM 2023, you do need to be a star member. You need to pay us 49 bucks for an entire year to get this pattern. You're also going to get Irene's blanks pattern of this year. Okay. This is next year. Irene blanks is this year. In addition to full access to all the shows and everything else that we have to offer you at TQS. So um, I want to be very clear about that. I don't want somebody buying the kit and then being all PO'd because the pattern's not in it. All right. So I'm going to go out. The great news is that we have our first strike off of our embroidery panel. Okay. So I'm going to run out, take a look, see at that, and then we'll pull the trigger on that one. We've got the threads all in and all of that. And basically I'm doing it in two colorways, having a great time watching Netflix doing it. And I will take you through, this is my plan right now. This is in December. I'll take you through the most simplest way to complete this panel, which is basically going to be red work style. Okay. But then you can add more if you want. You may have to extend yourself outside of the threads that we have here. You might, but we have plenty for the basic red, red work thing. Um, I would get a extra skein of embroidery floss and a piece, a hunk of fabric that you can practice on before you go to the panel. That's what I would suggest. All right. Catherine, thank you. Membership is a fabulous deal. You need to join if you're not a member. Catherine, I agree. I And I'm not just saying this. I'm like for reals. Okay, John's in here with something. Oh, yeah. Okay, so remember how I was giggling with um, Amy at some of those quilts? Well, I, I, I was snorting on Wednesday. Uh, Justin, you know, went and photographed quilts for us at... Um, Houston. And John said, pick out your favorites for whatever reason. And so he picked out, I don't know, maybe eight quilts. And we have close-ups and all that. And there was one 
that we couldn't stop laughing and it wasn't laughing in a mean way it's it it was it was crazy what this person did crazy and i'll tell you it had to do with another miniature and all of a sudden i realized we're just dying laughing and i'm thinking oh my gosh that person's gonna be hurt no it just made our hearts smile and there were a couple in there that you're well you're gonna go oh my gosh and then other ones where you go i can't believe they did that <laughs> so it's all with love grace and humor okay we will see you wednesday with justin have a great day bye-bye